Hi, I'm Niels, Director of Machine Learning for Cohere. I'm not a coffee drinker, which surprises a lot of people, but more like hot chocolate. So this keeps me awake, especially in winter. Get a good uh, hot chocolate in the morning, and then you're up and ready to do more machine learning. I mean, the, the, the goal of these large language models is to make us more productive. So to, to automate your boring, uninteresting task away. Like, I don't know, writing reports or, I don't know, maybe you have like these three bullet points, but you have to make a you know, like nice long written application because that's kind of like socially expected that you're not sending like three bullet points while you're amazing, but have all these boilerplate when you apply for a job. But yeah, sadly, it also makes the bad actors and people with bad intent more productive. And and so so that's always like a balance we have to find as, as a society. How can we make the good people more productive and like try to reduce the risk of making also the bad people more productive. Interesting. And is that something that you're focusing on right now as you've been working in large language models, especially like because the scale has increased massively and there are more people building applications on top of them? Or was this also a concern for you while you were doing like your PhD? And during the PhD, it was not so much of a concern. So, so during my PhD, it was more like text understanding, like find, I don't know, named entities and news articles. And there, not so much bad intent can be derived. But we really, with these generative models, you see a lot more interest. And at Cohere, it's also like a big, um, big interest on the one side, how to avoid that harmful content gets into the training of our models and that personal identification like credit cards, security numbers get into the model and reproduced by the model. How can we avoid that the model is not being used to, to like hate speech, producing hate speech so that you're flooding social media with like generated hate speech. Um, but it's it's kind of like hard and, and trade-off because also security principles, there's a trade-off. So, um, for example, people want like data privacy, so they don't want that model providers spy on what, how are they using the models, or what use cases and what text do they produce with it? Because it can also have like sensitive information in it. But if you ensure like these privacy, um, you cannot find like bad actors that's creating like a phishing attack and try to mail million users, 10 million users was like really personalized spam to do like phishing and try to get like credit cards from it. So, so you can, you have to do the trade off like either you respect the privacy of the users, then you can't avoid like the bad actors or you, you say, okay, you are more light on privacy and then you can prevent better like these or identify these bad actors that try to misuse the models. And so it's from a society perspective and, and regulation perspective, it will be interesting how to deal with it, like how to go forward. Also from a society perspective, um, how do we need to evolve? Like with every technology there was like misuse, like when email came up, spam, um, oh, yeah. came up, so true. which, which you didn't know from like classical written letters. Uh, but yeah, Perfect. people evolve. No, okay, yeah, I, I should not trust like every email I get. So if I get like an email, presumably from my bank, claiming, "Hey, you please enter your password here," we hopefully learned as humans to to not trust it, and then we we just need to also evolve and see, okay, what can we trust, and what can't we trust, and or like new trust measures we can implement. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So there's something else I wanted to ask you about because you basically we're hanging out in academia for a while and then you moved on to industry and what made you want to take the plunge into the industry and start getting your hands wet like trying to make money with machine learning as opposed to trying to write papers about machine learning yes so, so i love building stuff so so that's that's what i did for 20 years early on be like a really big contributor even like 20 years ago for open source community maintain and manage and set up so many open source projects and yeah and in science at some point when I made the move I said yeah it's it's I like more on building stuff than writing the papers so, so writing really scientific papers is, is a lot of overhead 
and it's not really focusing on what's useful and what's helpful for users. So, so you're the incentives is different. So, so you have to write the paper in a really specific format so that it gets accepted. Uh, but it's not really what's helping the user the most. And often, what's helping user the most, um, it's not publishable. So, for example, one example in the field is like the the reporter paper from Facebook, where people team from Facebook was working to make Bird better, understand Bird better, train it on more tokens, get out like a better model, which is used by millions of companies, the Roberto model, so extremely helpful. But when the team submitted it as a paper, the scientific community said, no, we should reject it from this conference because it's not novel. It's just like, Bird no. train on more tokens and optimized. And I didn't like this disparity that you say, okay, this is like what really helps and has a massive impact on users. And it's not really honored by the scientific community. So, and, and I said, okay, let's go really build stuff that's helpful for users and don't care if three random uh, anonymized reviewers like it or not and decide if the paper will be accepted or not.